Hey guys, how's it going? This is Chris here again with another uh, video for you guys uh, about Scratch. And today's video is not going to be a tutorial, but uh, I'd had the pleasure and the opportunity to talk to one of the biggest Scratchers, one of the great Scratchers out there in the community. It's Mr. Abdul. Um, and uh, I, had a, I had an interview about uh, you know some of his experiences. Um, and uh, he also gave me some information about um, about uh, the, the the game that he made very recently called Knotted. I'm sure if you guys go on the Explorer page uh, even right now, you can see it. It was featured. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna play that interview for you right now. Uh, but before I do that, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you like to see more, uh, you know, scratch videos and other programming tutorials. Um, and uh, hit the like button as well and share this video with your friend and listen carefully because there is a lot of knowledge being shared in this video by an experienced programmer, Mr. Abdul, and uh, I'm sure you're going to learn a lot from it. So listen carefully and enjoy. All right. Uh, hey, Abdul, how's it going? Good, Chris. How are you? Pretty good. Thank you very much. So, uh, from your profile, I see that uh, well, you're a medical student, um, yep. but but you also have like other background, like other like I'd say hobbies or might be even professions of doing design and uh, programming. So, can you tell me a little bit about that? So, I began undergraduate school at Loyola University here in Chicago with a degree, going for a degree in computer science as well as bioinformatics. Mm -hmm. And as I went through that, around my junior year, I had decided that I'm going to also pursue medicine since the computer science work that I had been doing was related to medicine in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So that sort of drew me towards the research side of medicine. And I wanted to become a doctor so that I could not only do the research side of medicine, but also implement whatever programs, whatever... Uh, creations come about from from that into actual patient care so that's why i wanted to end up becoming a doctor and in my future i see a lot of research essentially so that's why i've done both so like how, like as a doctor in the future are you more gravitating towards becoming like an actual like hands-on doctor or more like a researcher that uses a lot of you know computer science in their work I really hope that I can find a position to do both where mm -hmm. it's kind of, and I've heard of other doctors who have done this where they kind of have maybe a three day situation where they're in the clinic or in the hospital. And then the rest of the week they're in their research lab or doing some kind of research. So that's, that's my goal. That's what I want to find. All right. Awesome. How did you get started on scratch then? Okay. So I've actually probably been around since the very, very beginning. I think I first touched Scratch in like 2009. Mm -hmm. Wow. So at the time, I think they were still like developing like 1.1, 1.2. They were still not online. They were still just like a downloadable resource. Mm -hmm. And I had taken a class. My mom, so we were actually in Syria at the time. Okay. This was way before any of this stuff in Syria happened. Mm -hmm. um, so my family's Syrian. We were in Syria, mm -hmm. uh, and my mom enrolled me in a scratch course when it was like still brand new, and just that course alone hooked me on programming, hooked me on making games. All right. And I even remember like lists coming out for the first time. Okay. That was something <laughs> that right. I that I was around for. Uh, I think I had a couple more things in my notes. I actually took notes for each of these questions. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, like your profile says 10 years. I mean, that's, that's like, yeah. <laughs> I see that rarely on Scratch. Yeah, and, and I've actually had Scratch before those 10 years because there was no Scratch online before that anyway. So <laughs> it's been a very long time. Cool. All right. Did you want to add anything else or should I move on? That, that was all I had, actually. Okay. All right. So um, recently, one of your games got picked up. I'm pretty sure other games of yours also got picked up before, but this is the one that actually... Uh, you know, uh, got your profile, you know, to me, and it was the Knotted game. Can you tell me a little bit about that, how it came into being and uh, your ideas behind it? Definitely, yeah. So about a month ago, maybe a month or two ago, I was just watching a YouTube channel called Number File. You may or may not have heard of it. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, and they had a video about planar graphs, mm -hmm. and the video didn't really have much to do with the game, but they basically showed that how to 
they showed how to prove whether a graph is planar. And the, what that means if a graph is planar is that it can be modified such, or it can be manipulated such that there are no intersections. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal of my game. So if your viewers have seen my game, mm -hmm. the goal is to move around these, these dots so that the lines in between them don't intersect. And essentially what you're doing there is proving that the graph that I provided to you is planar mm -hmm. by showing that you can manipulate it to remove all the intersections. That's where the idea came from initially. All right. And uh, how long did it take for you to, to develop it? Okay, so I had this idea a while ago, but I've been like sitting on it. I didn't want to touch it. Mm -hmm. But I also have a game jam coming up. I don't know if you're aware of those as well. Not really. So game jams are basically where you have a very limited amount of time, mm -hmm. usually like two to three days to make a game from mm -hmm. start to finish. Mm -hmm. So I have one of those in about ex in exactly one week. Mm -hmm. It's called Ludum Dare. Right. And I kind of wanted to prepare myself for it, for like the very intense, rigorous game development. So I actually made this game in like pretty much one sitting of like eight hours. Holy cow, get just, that's fast. I just finished it in eight hours, yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome. I, I, I honestly, I thought like you spent at least like a week on it, but it's, it's awesome. It would have probably yeah. been. Yeah, I, if I had taken my time and didn't just have that motivation to practice, I probably would have taken about a week. All right. So a lot of your other games, like uh, the ones that I see on your profile, like most of them are also like somehow based on some sort of scientific fact or they have some sort of science background. Is that what you're mostly interested in? Let's see. So we got, there was the evolution simulator. That's one of right. them probably that you're looking at. So that one, I was actually just really interested in machine learning at the time. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to sort of make something up on my own because I, I was struggling to like write my own neural network from scratch or do those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see what I could do without really using any outside resources, just kind of trying to come up with something on my own. And mm -hmm. that's where the evolution simulator came from. Right. Okay. And um, so uh, you see a lot of uh, a lot of people say that like creating such profile or creating any program like uh, for computers um, requires a good, solid knowledge of mathematics. Would you say that is true or not? I think if you have a good, solid knowledge of math, you are definitely going to have more... I guess inspiration to make something because you know what's possible, you know more about what's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think that it's in any way like if you, I don't think you need math to make any idea come into fruition because there's so much online that you could just research mm -hmm. and sort of understand and, and put into your own code. So I don't think that you need to know math to put your idea into action, but you you might not have had the idea in the first place if you didn't know what was possible with math. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. How much math do you use in your projects? Uh, so really the only math that I've committed to memory is like the distance formula. Like, you know, change in x squared plus change in y squared all under square root is the distance formula. It's the only thing I actually memorize. Mm -hmm. um, everything else, like for example, in, in the new game that I made, Nodded, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there was a good deal of math when I had to figure out whether lines are intersecting. And I right. didn't know any of that math. That was completely, like, I didn't know any of it. So I had to go to Google and do a little bit of research and found a post, I think, on Stack Overflow. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And I just, they, they sort of explained it, I think, using Python code. So I just had to sort of transfer that information into Scratch, which was a little bit annoying because Scratch is missing a lot of things. Right. But but it did work out. Yeah, yeah it I did. It, it worked out wonderfully. <laughs> it is yeah, fantastic. Yeah, but I didn't need to know any of the math. So for any people who, who are worried about that, mm -hmm. like you don't need to have that background in order to do what you want to do. Exactly. Like for programming is the same thing. Like sometimes people say like they see a lot of movies or they see a lot of like extremely experienced people doing their thing, coding, like they don't even, uh, you know, look at stuff. But m for most of us, at least, it's a lot of, you know, doing like trial and error and, and research. And, you know, like when you don't know how to how to do something, you go and you, how to it on Google and uh, mm -hmm. you basically find a solution and you learn as you go. 
Yeah, I haven't met anyone who just knows everything off the top of their head. That's, <laughs> that's impossible. Yeah, exactly. You know, things, especially yeah. for programming, like things are changing every day, so it's literally impossible. Um, okay, cool. So um, your profile also says that you know C++, Java, C Sharp, Python, R, JavaScript. That's a whole lot of languages. Do we need to know many languages as programmers? And if so, what are your top three recommendations? Oh, okay. Well, I'll start with the first part of that. So okay. the, the, the reason why you'd want to know multiple languages is, to me, the only reason you'd want to know is to just apply your coding skills in more places. Mm -hmm. For example, you're not going to be able to use Unity unless you know either JavaScript or C Sharp. Mm -hmm. So if you had learned Python initially, it's not going to let you use Unity. Mm -hmm. um, another example is if you want to do a lot of bioinformatics analysis, since that was one of my majors, I did a lot of that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those tools are written in Python. I know obviously there's tools in other languages, but for me, if I didn't know Python, I probably would have struggled a lot in that aspect. So really the languages just allow you to access more tools. Mm -hmm. uh, but bottom line, if you know one language, you're, if you know one language really well, you can pretty much do anything you want in any other language because say I know like I learned Python first I think I was 16 when I learned it mm -hmm. uh, when I went to learn that my next language which was C sharp mm -hmm. I could pretty much do everything really fast because I know what to expect right. I know what I need to write the only thing that's missing is the syntax and that's very easy to Google so exactly. really if you know one language you know them all more, more specifically object-oriented languages right I agree yeah, yeah obviously Python usually people don't usually don't usually use it object oriented, but you can. Right. But yeah, I agree that like there's different categories of languages, and mm -hmm. I took a like, programming languages class, so I can go in depth on that if you want. But that's yeah. probably too boring. Yeah, yeah, I understand. What? No, that's great. So, what are your top three recommendations? So, as a beginner, 100%, you should probably go with Python first, and runner up would probably be JavaScript. Mm -hmm. I think those are the best two for beginners, because they're just like. They don't require a lot of annoying syntax, and they're pretty pretty easy to write in. Mm -hmm. I feel like I wouldn't say they're less picky, but they're just they just need less stuff. Like for example, I know JavaScript doesn't really throw errors the same way other languages do. They kind of just let you make mistakes, which can make debugging difficult. But mm -hmm. it just makes things a little simpler. So I'd say Python is number one, and JavaScript is number two for beginners. Um, in terms of a number three, I don't know. I think. I'd probably go for something with the widest application. So honestly, any of C++, Java, or C Sharp are very widely applicable. That's right, yeah. But, um, but for, uh, for Python and JavaScript, these are two languages that are also, like, if you're talking about from like a, a job perspective, these are the ones that are very highly in demand. Um, and mm -hmm. a lot of people are, you know, basically looking to hire for that. But aside from that, a lot of the things that are, like trending right now and might be going on in the future, like let's say machine learning uh, that, you know, has a lot of libraries uh, available for Python. Um, yes. And, uh, you know, all of these things that are, that are just coming up. And, you know, a lot of the developers are basically trying to develop whatever they're doing for more convenience rather than making it complex so that nobody uses it. And, and Python can make that convenience available to you um, Absolutely. You know, because of its simplicity, I guess. Um, and for JavaScript, I guess it's for, uh, you know, like it's right now it's quite uh, quite a broad language. Like you can use it for a lot of places. Um, native development for, for computers, for PCs, for uh, mobile applications, uh, front end, back end, everything. Like right now, JavaScript is like anywhere. <laughs> so it's crazy. Yeah, that's true. Um, so it's, a, it's definitely a good recommendation. Um, all right, that is uh, that is fantastic. Do you have any final advice for the listeners and who are just you know starting out with coding and just want to you know have something like a like say something that you would have done if you were just starting out? I see. Okay, so the first thing I think about when I want to give advice to someone who's just starting mm -hmm. is, for me at least, my the only reason I felt like I I've learned as much as I did and I've stuck with programming for so long is because there's always something that I was motivated by that this is what I want to make. Mm -hmm. And because I had 
a vision in mind, like a clear goal that I wanted to reach, mm -hmm. I learned a lot because when I have a goal and I don't know how to reach it, I start doing a lot of research and I start learning a lot on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe not for the absolute beginner, but if you are starting out and you've been programming for a little while, I think the best way to continue and expand and improve is to have clear goals about what you want to make and then just go for those goals and try to do everything you can, do all the research. Um, sorry, I missed the other half of your question. Yeah, just uh, basically just advice for beginners. <laughs> that's, that's all of it. <laughs> Yeah, like okay. what do you what do you what do you want? Yeah, what do you think that you would do as a beginner? Like, if you would go back like ten, fifteen years ago, what what would yes, something yeah. be for you that you would have done differently, or you know, a, a, an advice that you would have given yourself in the very beginning? Hmm. I think I would definitely recommend to keep making games in the beginning because those are really good ways to learn the basics. Okay. Like especially when you're when you're first learning how to program, you're learning variables and for loops and while and all this stuff. Right. Making a game is a really good way to use those, and I feel like it's very intuitive and visual when you use those things. Okay. Uh, so I think making games is a good starting point, and I th probably a lot of your viewers are already do doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but also, Scratch is a really good place to start because I honestly think the skills I had gotten from Scratch really helped me learn Python for the first time. Because I sort of had an idea of what needed to be done in order to make a game. Like I need to have, you know, a variable that stores the score and a variable that stores whatever. Like all the stuff I first learned in Scratch. Right. And Scratch is a very visual kind of place to start. Like it, you immediately see like if I put in a block that says go to X and Y, I can see that happen on the screen and I understand what that means right away. So that's why I really liked Scratch when I was like, you know, 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a great place for people to start and I'm sure your viewers found you through it so they should stick with Scratch for a little bit until they feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And if they want to use, you know, quote unquote, a real language, then mm -hmm. I think Scratch will help them do that. Yeah, definitely. The, the transition is going to be a lot easier than to just start out within like a text-based language for sure. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you very much, Abdul, again for uh, for for the time and congratulations again for the for the success of Not It. Uh, it's Thank definitely you. a great game. I enjoyed playing it several times, um, and uh, I look forward to seeing more of your work in the future. Thank you. Okay, guys, thank you very much uh, for watching. It was it was a great talk that I had with uh, with Abdul, and uh, it definitely uh, you know I learned a lot from him, and I learned a lot from his games that uh, that you guys can see even currently here. I played a little bit uh, while you were you were listening to to him. Um, uh, they're very awesome, awesome stuff. It's really worth uh, checking them out and seeing what is what is actually happening, even like within the code. If you have the time to go and take a look at it, look at a code and see, learn from it. Don't get intimidated. Go step by step, and uh, you know, see what you can do with it. But um, but uh, you know, as uh, as he mentioned, uh, Abdul, um. Uh, you know, some of these things take time, but definitely not something that is impossible for for anybody, you know. So just take your time uh, when you're creating your programs. Don't get impatient. Just just spend some more, you know, uh, more time on, on, on quality programs that you're trying to make, games or whatever that is try, you, you're trying to make. And uh, eventually you're going to make something that you're going to like and everybody else is going to like as well. Um, but in any case, um, let me know if you would like to see more of these uh, videos. I never saw like anybody making an interview video with, uh, you know, uh, good scratchers uh, on, on the Scratch website. So this was I'm pretty much pretty sure this is the first uh, interview that I'm that I'm doing like that is out there in the, on YouTube. Let me know if you want to see more of this. So I will reach out to more of the uh, scratchers and if you if you like to like if there's anybody in particular that you would like to uh, know more about and you would like to hear the interview from uh, let me know about that as well so that I will I'll try my best to get in touch with them but I'm um, uh, you know can't promise anything uh, but at the same time uh, check out my other videos uh, and other tutorials I'll be up updating my tutorials very soon as well 
Um, and if you have any recommendations or, or, or requests for other tutorials on Scratch or other programming languages, let me know as well, and I'll definitely make sure to check it out and uh, make something that everybody is going to enjoy. Uh, so please make sure you like and subscribe uh, the channel and uh, make sure that uh, you also share this video with your friends so that they can also learn uh, a little bit from this interview. But uh, in any case, thank you very much for watching again. And until next time, goodbye.